Hello. In this video, we're going to introduce garbage collection basics in Java. Garbage collection is a key feature of the Java platform and the brain or, or the core intelligence behind Java's memory management techniques. And as all of you might already know or have heard about that in Java, the programmer does not have to manage, actively manage the memory that the objects are using. He does not have to actively uh, allocate space on the heap or on the system memory or deallocate or clean up or reclaim that space. Hence, and this and the space management or memory management in programs in programming languages like C and C++ can <coughs> be very tedious. And this is one of the reasons Java takes, get, takes care of all of that and which makes it uh, makes the programmer a lot more productive and it's one of the, also one of the primary reasons uh, it attracts many people to the Java platform. So now we know that you know you don't have to have memory do memory management in Java, but what does it mean? Like, what? How does it happen? What is this garbage collection you keep hearing about? And um, does that mean that you know there is some magic and um, in a programmer in Java cannot leak memory? You know, how does it internally Java take care of all these memory issues? And you know, how when when do bad things happen in Java? So we're going to cover all of those topics in this video, starting with the basics of the Java heap. So when Java platform starts up, it gets a chunk of memory on the system. <coughs> this is, and the and the chunk of memory is divided into two part. Something called perm. gen space we'll talk about that later and what we're primarily interested on is the java heap and this is what we're interested about this is where all programs you write usually actively deal with uh, get get memory from this chunk so now that you know Java has objects and classes and you can create objects and you can create your own class and which is like a cust custom programmer written data type. Um, so let's assume I've already written a data type called table. So I do table A equals new table. This will create, as uh, we have already covered, a reference object of type table. And this is an instance which is um, of type table and this reference points to a real table object which is in the Java memory. And then let's create another instance of the table object called table B equals new table. <coughs> so B is another reference to another table object in the memory called B. Let's create third table object called C. Again we're creating a new table object by the, as you can see by this new keyword. So this is and the reference to some object in the memory to this object called C. Now you know all good you created a new table A, Java created a reference, which is this instance name, and that reference points to the physical real object location in Java's heap, and uh, that is 
this thing called A and so for B and so for C. Now I wanted to create another table object table D instead of creating a new object I say table D is equal to C. What I have done here is created a reference really but I have not created a new object was associated with that reference instead I associated an old object's location C's to that object so essentially this will point back to this C object see what's going on um, there are four references and three objects in the memory two of those references of the table are pointing to us the same object let me do something else. Let me do C equals B. Forgot the semicolons here. So at this point, this reference has been severed. We don't have this reference anymore. Now C also points to this B instance. <clears throat> Let's make another statement where we say D equals A. This point we have severed this link and made this D object point to the A object. So this C object is in memory but has nobody pointing to it and that's what becomes a garbage collection candidate and this is how Java determines that this object is not being used by anyone. It's just lying on the on the heap and using a memory. So every every few minutes, depending on some configuration, Java has a garbage collection thread. It's th a thread is basically, you know, a program, a small program. It runs and it looks at this heap and sees any object which does not have any reference pointing to it and just deletes them and releases that memory to to the Java heap. So the user does not have to, you know, create a new. Ob it, you create the object, but you don't have to do the cleanup. The cleanup automatically happens, and Java does it in the most optimal way for you. So we have figured out how garbage collection happens, how the object stays on the heap, and the life cycle. Let's go to a little advanced pieces of uh, Java, co the garbage collection techniques. Within the Java heap there is two regions of memory new and old. So, so the first time the garbage collector runs it cleaned up this object this is gone and at this point, um, this ob these objects uh, became a little older because they have survived one garbage collection run. As the as the object keep on becoming older and older, as they survive more of uh, garbage collection runs, the objects move into the old region of the of the Java heap. So, as, you, as I told you, the way garbage collection works is by a separate program running on a thread which comes and looks at all these objects and cleans it. But you would imagine that doing that can be expensive, especially, you know, in the computer systems we have today with like, you know, lots of memory, 4GB not being uncommon, and looking through that much memory and checking it will take some time and you don't want users to wait while the Java system is doing this cleanup for the program to execute that will basically feel like the program has crashed or something it's or it's blocked 
and that's not a good thing for the user. So by doing this logic or executing this <coughs> logic of generations, new and old, and some sophisticated Java code garbage collection algorithms have multiple generations, new, old, and very old. So by, by moving the objects, what Java does is that it has three garbage collectors. The one focused on the new space which runs frequently and the other focus on the old space, or space which does not run as frequently. So because most of the programs the way the researchers identified is that uh, they create a lot of variables and a lot of uh, objects and they use it for a very short amount of time and then they get rid of it. There are very few pro uh, objects which make it into the long term ones and the one which become longer term they stay around for a while. So there is no point in like trying to uh, clean up the long-term objects as often as you would want to clean up the short-term objects. And that's how Java makes the garbage collection process faster at the same time making it memory efficient. And that's, that's a few Java garbage collection concepts in a nutshell.